2020 Caballino Classic, a Ferrari show in Palm Beach, Florida that occurs every year. Uh, it's, although it started really as an antique vintage Ferrari show, it really has everything from the very oldest to the absolute cutting edge of modern Ferraris. My name is Bruce. Uh, try to come here every year. Uh, unfortunately, I don't live in Florida anymore, so in the rare occasion that I get an opportunity to come, I get super excited like a little kid. I'm going to walk you around the field in no particular order, and I'm going to look at all the cars and give you my thoughts on them, and I hope you find it as enjoyable as I absolutely love making this video. Finally, I want to take a moment before we continue to ask you to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button, both of which are tremendously helpful in me growing this channel. Enjoy! Ferrari 250 GTO. This is thirty to fifty million dollar car. This one is owned like famously by thirty to fifty, isn't it? More. More? And what you heard right there is the problem with these 250 GTOs. Everybody gets caught up in the price, and they don't really care about the car anymore. It's become a commodity, which is unfortunate because it's one of the most successful race cars ever, and also one of the most beautiful cars ever. And this is also owned by the same guy who owns that GTO. It's a 250 GT TDF Tour de France. This is a very, very rare car. I've never seen one of these in person. And later on in this video, you're gonna see that there's a modern version that is supposed to uh, pay tribute to this one, although I think it's a poor substitute. So this is gorgeous. And look at this one over here, 500 TR. Actually, the first Testarossa, it became much more famous than Testarossa did uh, when it sprouted pontoon fenders. Pretty sexy little race car. Oh, wow. This is a Monza SB1. It's a, I don't know, it's like one of 20 or one of 100. As you can see, it's a single seater. Not a very useful car, doesn't even have a windshield. But what can you say? The damn thing is gorgeous. And I did see somewhere else in the show field uh, a 750 Monza, which is the inspiration for this car. So actually, now that I think about it, it's pretty fitting that they have both the modern version and the original version in the same show field. And now that I look at it a little more, I mean, it's just a gorgeous car, but it has some awkward angles. Uh, it, I mean, looking at it from the front, it's granted it's a good looking car, but see uh, kind of the, the center part right next to the seat. It's kind of flat there. I guess they, they could have probably done something with that space. It looks a little bit like fiberglass, like a, like a boat. It's just so flat. Regardless, uh, the presence of this car is just amazing. I'm just so happy that I've seen it. I think this is a 250 GT Luso. If I'm not mistaken, I guess the guy's got a get home for early dinner. Gorgeous car. I've seen quite a few of these over the years. Check this out. This is a 340 Mexico. I think it's Pinales uh, designer. Very famous race car. Alberto Ascari. I think Carl Shelby uh, raced these cars. Just, uh, again, I've never seen this car in person before. What a treat. Not a the most beautiful car ever, I will say, but there's a really unique detailing going on in the front and the rear. These are the 250 GT California Spiders. Uh, this model was made specifically for the United States. Little known fact, the state of California was named after this car. That's right. Uh, let's see, we got two, three, uh, six cars. Uh, by far not the best looking Ferrari in my mind. Maybe I'm just tired of seeing them because they made quite a few of them and everybody just loves them. And when people think classic Ferrari, this is the model that they think of. And it's a, supposedly a very comfortable car. It makes amazing noises and it, it must drive amazing. Here's a 250 GT Pininfarina convertible. Right next to it, a uh, Pininfarina Coupe. These cars, they kind of get lost. They're not uh, the most showy cars. They're, they're very elegant cars and seen separately from this situation, uh, they look pretty awesome. The roof, it's uh, challenging. <laughs> it's not the most beautiful solution for the roof. This is a 250 GT. I think this is the Elena Coupe. And if this is here, there must be a Boano somewhere else uh, because they are tied at the hip. Cool cars. 
look at this right here 250 gt short wheelbase probably my favorite ferrari of all time look at that i mean look at that it is just beautiful beautiful car overall uh, very successful racing cars they, the engines they sound amazing they look mm, just perfect this is a precursor to the 250 gto that we saw earlier oh my god every time i see one of these cars it, it just blows my mind F50. They made, I think, 399 of these cars. These cars are supposedly the best drivers Ferraris ever. The, they shriek like a Formula One car with a V12 engine. It's a manual transmission. It's a carbon fiber body one. That was a brand new thing. Possibly top 10 Ferraris ever. Just because the driving experience has to be incredible. <laughs> This is an oddity, uh, a Ferrari SP30, custom made for some Indian guy back in the day. It's not the most attractive. It looks, it just looks like cheap cologne in there. <laughs> never seen it before, probably never seen it again. Not caring about it. And here, look at this, a 250 GT Boano, meaning that the one we saw earlier is a 250 GT Arena. This is a 250 GT 2 plus 2. I don't think I've ever seen one of these cars before. And here's one, two. Look at this, it's Survivor. I love that they kept it like that. It's a car that it gets enjoyed. It's pretty awesome. Uh, so this would be three, seven of these cars. So from zero to seeing seven of them in my lifetime. Car that Enzo Ferrari himself drove. Uh, you know, it's a 2 plus 2, so it has a vestigial rear seats. And the same engine as uh, the legendary cars of that era. So, win-win. Here's a 275 GTB. Two of them. Uh, not my favorite car. I've seen quite a few of them. I think they, uh, they made, either they made a lot of them or I've just been run into them all over the place. Uh, <laughs> it's not the best looking car in my mind. Uh, some people just love it. I, I can take it or leave it. On the other hand, this is one of my favorite Ferraris, a uh, 330 GTC. It is a gorgeous car. Look at the profile. The profile is just epic. Oh man, what a gorgeous car. It's actually very Germanic looking with the short overhangs. Uh, very Kind of reminds of BMWs of the era, to be honest with you. Interior is really cool. Here's a row of F40s. Wow, there's like 13, 1400 of them sold in the world. I've seen quite a few of them. Uh, always pleasant to see because look at that profile. It's amazing. Ah, such good looking cars. I've been lucky enough to have been in one in Virginia, not in Virginia, in Summit Point Raceway. Uh, looking up close, you can see the Lexan engine cover. You can see the weave of the, of the Kevlar carbon fiber body. It's, if I'm not mistaken, the second car to have it. The first car was a Jaguar XJ220, if I'm not mistaken. But this one is a much better looking one. And now, upping the rarity scale, here's a 288 GTO. If you're wondering why this looks so much like a 308 made famous by Magnum PI, well, this car is based on a 308, but it is far removed from it. Um, they mounted the engine longitudinally. It has the engine of an F40, which we just saw. Um, they, they, this is such a rare car. I've only seen two in my time. Um, they, they made like, I don't know, like 400 of them, something like that. Beautiful car, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Love it. The rest of the show field, let's see, is there anything that I want to look at? Um, and, and walk all the way down there. A lot of Dinos, a lot of 308s, 328s. Not too interested in it. The 
brand new one, the F8 Tributo, just came out next to it. Ferrari La Ferrari. And here's the other TDF that I talked to you about earlier. This is the F12 TDF. Uh, these cars are, each one is unique. They're all one of one. Um, I don't think it's a very attractive car. The F uh, F12 is not a very attractive car either. They must be amazing to drive. They sound pretty wicked. And, you know, all the people who bought them immediately started trying to flip them. And I think they still command like over a million dollars. So it was a very successful car for Ferrari. Look at this, a Ferrari Daytona made famous by Miami Vice. Um, and also by the countless uh, Corvette replicas that were built. And another 250 GTE. This one didn't even make it on the show field. I guess they had too many. <laughs> um, this was, what, the eighth one I've seen today? Well, look at that, Montana plates. This car is not from Montana. I guess rich people don't like paying taxes any more than we do. Just a quick walk through the parking area, which is always a, a good car spotting situation. You see the Ferraris all over the place. There's all, some Lamborghinis. There's uh, an Urus for everybody. Um, GT2 RS, pretty cool. And another 250 GTE. I didn't get a chance to look at this car closer, but man, it sounds so good, doesn't it? <laughs> it's a, I think it's a Ford? How do you know? It, this is a 410 Super America. There's a 400 Super America somewhere else. I don't know, I've got to point it out once I see it. GTO. Oh my god, did you hear that? Can you hear that short wheel base? How good it sounds. Take a closer look at it, but it's not long enough, people. 
I got a Lamborghini Miura SV floating for good measure. And this has to be considered the first supercar ever. And finally, we come upon this 750 Monza. It's, a, it's actually a four cylinder engine, uh, but it sounds pretty amazing as you're about to hear. And that's it for the video. I hope you really enjoyed it. To me, it's just a Every time I come, it's like a once in a lifetime opportunity to come. I want to remind you to subscribe to the channel. Super helpful for me. And hit the like button. Thank you.